Hey guys, I'm back with an update to the uh, script. After the last video, Bob asked if I could uh, update the script to allow it to generate winding props for people to wind their coils around. Um, so I've gone ahead and done that. The first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to uh, update the uh, .scad library to the latest master version um, because the script uses that library and there was a change to the library which it needs to fix a bug that was stopping things from working when generating winding props. So um, I've added a section down here at the bottom. You'll notice that all the same parameters you used for the regular coil geometries are used for the winding props, but there are a few additional parameters. So I'll just go over those here. So um, first off, I'll talk about the three tour. So for the three tour, I've got basically three parameters. Um, the three parameters are um, gap, this is used just to split the edge of the torus, so if you don't want that, you can make it zero. And splitting the edge allows you to feed the material through the gap instead of needing to feed the whole wire through every time. For a three tour, it's not that big of a problem because it's it's only 12 windings, so it won't take you too long anyway, so you probably may not even want the gap. Um, unless you're using the hollow core option, which I'll talk about later. So the next option is split. Um, split basically splits the donut in half to allow you to print it with the flat side facing down so that you can then glue it together afterwards and you'll have a cleaner surface whereas if you print it as one solid item with supports underneath you'll find that it'll get a little bumpy and it won't be as smooth underneath it's still fine but you know it's just an option to have and also splitting it gives you the flexibility to now have a hollow core which is what the last option is here um, so if you put the zero there, it'll leave it with a solid core. If you put some number there, that'll be the radius of the hollow core that you've got there. And having a hollow core will allow you to put tubing in there or maybe some other ferrous wire or something, just so that you can experiment with different cores. Um, if you're going to use the hollow core option, you will need to split it and you will then need to print it with support material. I would recommend printing the outside facing down with the support on it because um, it'll probably be easier to remove the support material and have an outside that looks okay rather than removing support material on the inside assuming you want to put tubing in or something with a uh, small clearance but you know you could do the other way too it's up to you guys um, so that's it for the three tour for the four tour um, basically what we've got is you've got a few different options so the first main option is segments. And um, this option just says, how many segments do you want to print? So in, in one unit. So for example, here I've got a 24 top level tour, a tour with 24 top level segments. And I've chose to print six segments because that's the maximum size I can fit on my 3D printer printer bed. Um, you'll probably want to keep the segments as an even divisor of the total number of segments, because that way you'll be able to print the same item four times, for example, in this case, four times, and they should all stick together fine and line up properly. If you start using um, fractional segment numbers here, you're not gonna be able to print the same one and have it line up um, properly without printing yeah you'll you'll want to make that a whole uh, an integer divisor of the other one the other thing to keep in mind is you can actually specify sort of um non-integer values for the subwinding values but if you do that it, you aren't going to be able to stick them together when you then use the segment value here because they won't have the proper alignment so you'll want to keep these the, the two the the second level should be an integer and the the top level segment count should be a number which is evenly divisible by however many segments in each piece you're going to try to print. So that being said, the options besides segment are, uh, let me just take this down to a lower value. You've got, you'll see on the model, there's a hole here and there's a little knobbly bit here and those are there's a that's basically a key for this to fit in so that you can then stack them together 
Um, and you can adjust the size of that by changing this multiplier value. So if I change that to one, it'll make it smaller. And if I leave it at 1.5, it'll make it bigger. Uh, because when you 3D print, things aren't often quite perfectly printed, you'll find that you may need to sand down this knob a little bit to fit it in the hole. Or alternatively, you can also change this tolerance value, which will decrease the size of, I think it actually increases the size of the hole so that the knobbly bit would fit in even if it wasn't a perfect match. But I, I prefer to just sand it because that way you get a much tighter fit and that way it'll stick together better. I mean, you'll probably want to use glue any, you may want to use glue, you may not want to use glue, but um, sanding it gives you a tighter fit. So that's what I would recommend for people who have a relatively small 3D printer like I do and can't print out the full coil. If you're gonna print out the full coil, however, what I would recommend is that you basically, you add one additional segment here and you increase the radius of the coil by one segment size. So what I did is I divided by 24 and I multiplied by 25 and then you choose just to do 24 segments. And what this will do is it will give you a large coil with one segment gap missing through which you can then wind your wire. Um, and that is pretty useful because you, you don't want to be winding, putting your whole wire through the hole every single time for this one because you already need to wind it. In this case, I've got 24 by 24, so that's like 500 times you've got to wind it through. And it's much easier if you're just winding round and round and round and you can just sort of pass the end through the gap. And then when you're done, because it's relatively flexible, you can just connect these two bits together and then it should have the proper radius to match whatever value you would have had here before you divided it and multiplied it by the additional values. Um, so that's what I would recommend doing. Just as a proof of concept, I did print out the six segment one that I designed up here uh, on my 3D printer just to make sure that it was relatively possible to do it. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like in Prusa Slicer here. So basically some tips for doing the support material are basically that what you'll wanna do is if you're using Prusa Slicer, you'll want to basically come in here and set your support to be a certain size and then click in force, for example. Um, and then what you'll want to do is remove the support you don't actually need. So for example, all of these grooves here, you don't actually really need the support in them because it's, uh, it's going to be supported by the bit below and doing this will make your cleanup job a lot easier because otherwise you're going to have a lot of material to remove and it's kind of difficult to get it out of these parts. So I'll just, that's what I, I did, but then you got to make sure that you do actually have those bits with support on them. Um, so anyway, so that's what I would do for the support material. And then when you're done that, oops, you know, I'll just let it do that while I show you guys some pictures of what it looked like when I printed it. So when I printed it, this is what it looked like with all the support on it. It took about seven hours to print out just these six and um, removing the support material took about 20 to 30 minutes to get it all out and to clean it up a little bit. Um, and then once I cleaned it up, I didn't have a coil because I haven't made a coil winding machine. So I just wound some wool around it just to show you. And this is kind of what it looks like when you wind the coil around it. Um, yeah. So that's basically uh, what I've got for you guys. So it does take a while to slice this because it's quite large and it needs quite a lot of support material. So um, yeah, I'll just let that finish. So there you go, you can see what it looks like. And you can see for the part where we did actually clean it up so we didn't need support material, it um, it's not generating it in between here because we cleaned that up. At least I think that's where we cleaned it up. Whereas for the other ones, it's generating support material there, which you then need to take out. Um, but yeah, I'll, you can figure out what the best approach is for your 3D printer. Um, so that's the update I've got. If you've got any questions or suggestions, 
uh, just let me know. Thanks.